My name is Adrian Wildsmith, fire truck mechanic for Fort Gary Fire Trucks. I'm going to show you the layout of the panel on the D&D range truck and some of the simple operations. And then we're going to show you how to start pumping with the truck and uh, blowing foam and caps of pressure. First of all, this is the main operator panel. The master switch is underneath the red cover. If the red cover is dropped, power comes onto the system. Next to the master switch, there is also an emergency stop button. The emergency stop button is pressed. The master switch has to be reset. On the controller, there is four buttons along the bottom. The first two on the left, when pressed together, will start the pump. The two on the right, when pressed together, will stop the pump. The up and down button raise and lower the RPM of the engine. There is also a manual throttle to turn to the right to increase the pressure turn to the left to decrease pressure and press for emergency idle. On the panel we have an electric valve for the tank to pump. Simple to press the green button to open, red button to close. There is also three presets. Pressing the yellow button goes to preset one, Press it again, it goes to preset 2, and then when you press go to, the valve will open to that preset. Next to the tank to pump valve, we have the water level gauge. Currently, it's showing almost empty. Uh, the water level gauge will increase, and eventually it will be a full green bars, all the way to the top for a full tank. Tank fill is a lever, which you need to pull up to release the lever, bring down. And again, it is locked there, you need to pull to close. All the levers for the discharge are the same, and they're all marked with which discharge is which. Discharge 1 on the rod side, discharge 3 on the curb side, discharge 2 on the rear, and the two hose reels on top of the truck. Each valve is for water, Next to the valve for water, there is a, a knob to increase and decrease the amount of air going to each discharge when in calf's operation. Simple quarter turn to fully open and fully close. Next we have the foam system with the foam level gauge which is fully full. Press the button to start the system. The blue shows the system is ready for injection. When the water is flowing, the blue light will flash to tell you you are injecting foam into the system. The red light 
will flush when the tank is empty. When the red light is on solid, the tank is totally empty, the system will shut down. We have an electric primer on the system. This is to evacuate the air from the pump to uh, prime the system and to pull the water into the pump. The CAFS control system is on this panel. There is a three-way switch. The, calf should, uh, the pump should always be started in unload mode. For use with tools, the CAF system can be put in the fixed mode, which sets an automatic pressure of 150 psi on the pressure. With the CAFs in auto mode, the CAFs air pressure will follow the water pressure in the pump all the way from 50 to 150 psi. The best performance on the CAFs is about 125 psi, as indicated on the label. Drafting operations, we've connected a hose up into our pit. Uh, this is all tightened up. The valve is closed, up is open. And we're going to open the valve and we're going to start the pump. Climb the pump by sucking water up the hose and then flow water to one of the discharges. Start the pump now. First of all, turn on the master switch. Wait a few seconds for the controller to engage. It's telling me to wait to start, now we're okay. To start the pump, bottom two left buttons pressed together. Now, five, pump, the electric part of it. We're going to start the pump again and flow foam and water and calves through hose reel number one. So, first of all, start the uh, water pump. Water 
to make a dryer flow so that can close the water. Let's see if it's flowing. First of all, we turn off the air supply, unload the compressor, turn off the pump system, and flush all the hoses with clean water. In the cab we have another control panel for use by the driver. It's got some of the similar controls as on the main pan panel. We have the engine start, throttle up and down controls, pump pressure gauge, air pressure gauge, water level gauge, foam level gauge, tank to pump valve. We've also got the foam system, start stop button, two switches for the go lights on top of the cab, left and right. We have the siren control and the joystick for the turret. The two switches in the center, the top one is for the grass nozzles. Uh, there is two nozzles on the front bumper and two down facing nozzles underneath the truck, which is a simple switch off and on. You have to lift the switch up before it can be moved. The switch for the grass nozzles has to be lifted up before it can be moved because it has a small lock on it. The light will turn on when the valve is open. The similar switch for the monitor control, this controls the calf system going to the monitor. In off, obviously nothing happens. In auto, when we are running, this will start the system automatically, start the foam system and supply air to the turret. In on position, all you'll get is air to the turret to blow the water out and to clean the lines going to the turret. We're going to start the pump from the cab. First we're going to open the tank to pump valve, it's fully open, same control as on the main panel, two left buttons to start the engine, we have water and air, we can increase pressure with this up button, now I got to Change the cap system from unload to auto. So now the air pressure will follow the water pressure up as we increase the pressure. We're going to flow water through the turret. And now when I engage the cap system, Move the switch to auto and lift the right hand switch up on the joystick. The foam system is now engaged and the calf system is now engaged. And to turn that off again. 
bring the switch down on the turret and move the switch to off. And turn off the turret waters.